The Lucrotor are intelligent the way dogs are intelligent, one of them said in Hal's voice. They comprehend emotions in a few simple phrases. No saying for sure how much human speech they understand, but it does not matter. You cannot trick them. They remember things. Dang it, I don't care, Luke argued. Look, you got a keyboard. Just write down whatever you want to say, okay? I don't want those things staring at me all day while we wait here to... die. Hal hesitated. Then he gave the monsters a shoe gesture, and they disappeared through the tunnel. It was an odd thing, waiting to die. Usually Thalia and Luke had about two seconds to save themselves from a daily monster attack. Now, they had less than a day to figure out how to escape this house. Secretly, part of Luke wanted to knock out the old man with his club and feed his body to the drapes. At least then, the monsters couldn't use Hal to lure more demigods to their deaths, but he figured that wouldn't make him any better than Apollo. If anyone deserved a whack on the head with a golf club, it was Apollo, and all the rest of the deadbeat Olympian parents for that matter. Luke just started to notice the books on Hal's shelf, which mostly just had ancient history books or thriller novels. Hal typed on his computer, You are welcome to read anything, just please not my diary. It is private. Luke doubted the books would be much help, nor could he imagine Hal had anything interesting written in his diary, considering he had been trapped in this room most of his life. Hal showed Luke his computer's internet browser. Luke thought, great, we can order pizza and let the monsters eat the delivery guy. He almost thought of emailing someone for help, except they didn't actually have anyone to contact. On top of that, Luke never used email before, which was actually a common thing for demigods. He and Delia learned the hard way that demigods using technology was like attracting sharks with blood. And just pressing a single button was like sending out a signal letting monsters know your location. Luke scanned the bathroom, which contained some mortal medicine and first aid, and also some ambrosia and nectar. The closet had some spare snakeskin coats, but there didn't seem to be anything that could help them escape or fight the monsters. I just don't get it, Thalia complained. Why would Amalthea lead us here? Then Hell typed, Amalthea? didn't see any point in keeping it a secret, so he explained why they came in the first place. After that, Hal typed, I've heard of Amalthea, but don't know why she led you here. The other demigods were only attracted by the treasure here. He got up and walked into his closet. Inside, he showed them a small safe, about as big as a microwave. Uh, can you open that? Luke asked Hal. Hal just shook his head and made a sort of knife to the throat gesture. Let me guess. It's a trap. Something deadly is inside? Hal nodded. Then Luke knelt down to take a closer look. Luke didn't touch it, but he held out his hand close. He tried sensing for the lock's mechanism. His fingers felt warm. That only told Luke one thing. Whatever's in here, he said, it's bad news. This is why we're here, Thalia said. My dad wanted me to find this. Luke had no idea why she kept so much fate in her dad. Zeus hadn't treated her any better than Hermes treated him. Plus, this safe led a lot of demigods to their deaths. She fixed him with her intense blue eyes, and once again, she was going to get her way. You want me to open it, don't you? He asked her. Well, can you bypass it? Maybe, but it's the second trap I'm worried about. Uh, what? she asked. I can try to disable it, Luke said, but if anything goes wrong, this house will fill up with gas. He touched the lock. Hal put one hand on his left shoulder for support, and Thalia put one hand on his right. Luke's pulse quickened. Sweat ran down his head. He felt metal parts moving around inside, and then, click, inside was a jar of green liquid. Hal exhaled, and Thalia kissed Luke on the cheek, which she probably shouldn't have done while he was holding that jar. They knew exactly what it was. Greek fire. Magic fire created by the gods. It couldn't be put out with water or a fire extinguisher. Thalia noticed something else was in the safe. A bracelet? It didn't seem much, just a plain metallic ring that fit perfectly around her wrist. But then, she stroked her finger on it, and then, whoosh! 
It unfolded into a bronze shield with the face of Medusa. Luke and Hal scooted back a few feet away. Thankfully, no one turned to stone. Luke remembered hearing stories about a shield like this. After the hero Perseus was finished using the head of Medusa for his quest, he returned it to Athena and she decided to melt hot metal on the head and use it to decorate a shield for herself. No way this could have been that shield. It had to be a replica or something. Then Hal ran back to the keyboard and typed, That safe has been on open since before I was born. Apollo said my curse would end when the rightful owner claimed the treasure. Are you the ones? Wait a minute, Thalia said. I had no idea this thing was here, and I'd never even seen it before. And if your curse is supposed to end now, does that mean you can talk again? Hal opened his mouth, but no words came out. Maybe we're supposed to help you break free from this place first, Luke guessed. Hal typed, Or maybe I die today? Well, thank you, Mr. Cheerful, Luke argued. I thought you knew what'll happen, you know, with seeing the future and all. Hal typed, I haven't used my power in years. I told you what happened. Apollo punished me. Oh, sure, Luke argued. Don't make it worse. You might mess up this little nice life you got going on for you. Luke knew it wasn't helping, but the old man's cowardice annoyed him. He let the Olympians use him like a punching bag for too long. He should have fought back. Hal flopped in his chair, and they realized he was silently crying. Thalia shot Luke an irritated look. It's okay, Hal, she said. We're not giving up. The shield must be the answer. Hal typed, The monsters cannot be hurt by any metal. Thalia turned to Luke and said, Your turn for an idea. Luke looked at the small dog door in the cage. If the bedroom door wouldn't open, and they couldn't get out through the windows with the deadly drapes in the way, then maybe that dog door was the only way out of the room. Metal weapons wouldn't work on the monsters, and if they tried opening the jar, it would kill not just the monsters, but everyone in the room. Then Luke tried the computer again. He tried searching through Wahoo and looked up the Lucrota, hoping to find their weaknesses. The internet had almost nothing on them, except that they were legendary animals and that they lure their prey by imitating voices. Then, Luke tried typing in, Help me kill Lucrota. The biggest hit he got was, Help me cure leukemia. He was almost ready to let the curtains kill him. He looked at the clock, which said 4 p.m. Then Hal gestured for the keyboard. They switched places and Hal typed, I will try to read the future. Apollo cannot punish me more than he already has. Thalia, please take my hands. She hesitated, but she let him take her hands, and he closed his eyes. Seconds later, his eyes widened and went back to the keyboard. He typed, You are destined to survive past today, but someday you will sacrifice yourself to save your friends. The visions are hard to explain. Years of hibernation. You will change once and change again. Your path will be sad and lonely, but one day you will find your family again. Thalia dropped the shield and then clenched both her fists. That... that makes no sense. I'll sacrifice myself but won't die? Changing? Sleeping? You call that a future? And I don't have any family. All I had was my mom and there's no way I'm going back to her again. Hal typed, I am sorry. I cannot control what I see, but I did not mean your mother. Thalia looked like all her blood drained from her body. Luke wasn't sure why she looked so scared. He knew she didn't like to talk about her old life back in LA, and as far as he known her, she really didn't have any other relatives besides her mom. Thalia, he asked her, you know what he's talking about? Forget it, she answered. Hell's powers are rusty. He was pretty sure she didn't believe it. Then Hal stretched his hands toward Luke, which told him it was his turn for a fortune telling. Luke hesitated, but if Hal was right, and Thalia lived past today, he felt at least some spark of hope. He had to try. When Hal was done, he yanked away and stared in terror. Okay, Luke said. I'm guessing you didn't see anything good? Hal walked back to the keyboard and hesitated. Seconds later, he typed, Fire. I see fire. I saw a sacrifice in your future. 
but also a choice and a betrayal. You mean someone betrays Luke? Dally asked. Because I know Luke would never betray me, and I could never do that to him either. Haltite, his path is hard to see, but if he survives past today, he will betray. Dahlia ripped the keyboard from the desk. Enough! She growled. You trap demigods here and take away their hope with your horrible predictions? No wonder everyone else gave up. Just like how you gave up. You're pathetic! Anger burned in Hal's eyes. They didn't think the old man had it in him. He rose to his feet, and for a second, Luke was afraid he might consider hitting Dahlia. Go ahead, she said, or are you too fragile? Stop it, both of you, Luke said, getting between them. And they both backed down. Hal, you mentioned fire, Luke told him. You said the monsters can't be hurt by metal, but have you ever tried to burn them? Hal took the keyboard again and typed... What are you suggesting? Well, Luke said, if we could open that jar and once it's open, would the fire in it spread out immediately? Hal typed, Hard to be certain. I never used Greek fire before. Luke, what are you doing? Dally asked. Well, I'm not saying it's the best idea, but... He tried his best to explain his plan. Once the monster came back, they would throw the open jar at them and burn them, and somehow they would have to go around the monsters without getting eaten or burned alive. That could engulf the entire room in seconds, Dahlia warned. Luke's mind kept going back to what Hal said about a sacrifice in his future, and he got the feeling not all three of them would make it out alive. Then Hal handed Luke the green book he had before. He wrote a message for Luke to see. It said, Luke, I want you to take this diary. It has all my predictions, notes about the future, and my thoughts about where I went wrong. It might help you. There was a second message that said, You have an important future. Your choices will change the world. You can learn from my mistakes. Continue the diary. It might help you with your decisions. What decisions? Luke asked. What did you see that scared you? His pen hovered over the page for a while, and then he wrote, I think I finally understand why I was cursed. Apollo was right. Sometimes the future is better left a mystery. Hal, your dad was a jerk, Luke insisted. You didn't deserve... Hal tapped at the page insistently. Then he wrote, Just promise me you'll keep up with the diary. If I had started recording my thoughts earlier in my life, I might have avoided some stupid mistakes. And one more thing I'd like you to have. He handed the dagger from before to Luke. Uh, thanks, but I'm more of a sword guy, Luke said. Besides, you're gonna need a weapon too when we get out of here. Hal started writing for a long while before Luke saw his next long message. On the next page, Luke read, I will do it. Here is my plan. You two are going to hide in the closet, and I am going to wait in the bathroom with the jar. Then, when the monsters come, I will make them come to me, and I will trap them with me in the bathroom. Then you two are going to run, and I am going to open the jar. This blade was a gift from the girl I saved. She promised me it would protect its owner. A dagger doesn't have the same power or reach of a sword, but it takes the bravest and the cleverest warriors to use it. I'll feel better knowing you have it. No, please, Luke begged. We can all make it. We'll think of something. Hal wrote, We both know that's impossible. I can communicate with the monsters, which makes me the logical choice for bait. Luke couldn't believe he was willing to sacrifice himself for two kids he just met. He didn't look like a cowardly old man anymore. He looked like a brave demigod, ready to go out fighting. He wrote one last word. Promise. Okay, Luke said, sobbing. I will. I promise. Luke hugged the old man. He wasn't sure why. Maybe Hal could have used one from just someone after all these years. Hal hugged him back, and then... Clang! A sound like something big and heavy automatically unlocking came from the other end of the room. The bars of the cage were slowly rising, and the metal dog door started to open 